is a video over the Wilkinson notation and uh, the mixed effects module in the nearest toolbox. Uh, if if you're new to both, that's that's fine. If you're new to, uh, if you're not, if you know the mixed effects effects model well, you may still be new to Wilkinson notation. Uh, to run you through it, uh, once your data has actually been loaded in to the nearest toolbox, to the brain analyzer toolbox, you process it, you convert it to hemoglobin, and you model it using a GLM, you likely want to actually test a few things for statistical significance. It might be a t-test, uh, but you also might be asking questions about, does age impact my model? Does subject variation impact my model? Does conditions impact my model? Or do a combination of some of these impact my, uh, my model? Uh, the mixed effects model basically allows you to uh, interpret your data using all these different sorts of variables thrown in, usually demographic related or, or related to your experiment. And it also allows you to look at the interaction between these. Uh, you'll see them called regressors or parameters or ver uh, uh, predictor variables or things like that. Usually this model will look something like this, uh, where y equals beta 1 x 1 beta being a coefficient, x being the parameter or variable, usually a matrix or something like, or a, a function or something along those lines, um, design matrix, if you will. Uh, then you have beta 2, x2, beta 3, x3, and it goes on and on and on as long as you want. Variables could be things, as I mentioned, as age, sex, condition, group, uh, pretty much anything you could dream up uh, to see if there's some sort of statistical significance for that compared to the actual outcome. To use this, uh, there's a mo uh, in the nearest folder, uh, under the module subfolder, there's a mixed effects function. Uh, within that, you have uh, several parameters, uh, one of which is formula. Formula is probably going to be the most important one. Um, you'll actually have to use it right in your formula, and this will use what's called Wilkinson notation. Wilkinson notation is a little weird when you first see it, but basically what we had here of y, where is it? y equals b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus b3 x3 etc you're going to have replace that and y now becomes beta you're solving for for a beta this is kind of your equal sign here this this squiggly sign the negative one denotes whether or not you want to include a beta naught or a, a y intercept um, and then you, here we have group colon condition or cund plus this funny looking y or a parentheses with subject uh, I'll get to exactly what these are representing here in a second. But you basically would set this up as a job, put in the formula, j.formula, you would actually replace the, that, the default formula as that, move through, dummy coding you can put in as full, and then you would run it. And you'd run it here, in this case, my, my GLM, I call GLM, .group, or GLM group. So that's actually my, my modeled output. And I save it as mixed effects in that case. For Mo Wilkinson notation, uh, it's it's a little strange, at least for me, when I first saw it. Um, but and and for if even if you're familiar or somewhat with the mixed effects model, this might be new. It's the goal was to provide a uniform but customizable way to specify this this model. Um, so assuming that our model looks something like this, where y equals your intercept beta naught plus your beta x plus beta x plus beta x, and it keeps going the new intro becomes actually not y squiggly or tilde, it would actually be beta tilde. Uh, so that was a mistake on my part. Uh, beta x is now replaced with the variable. Uh, it, it, you, it will be a, a variable in your demographics table. It has to be something along those lines. So think group, subject, age. Uh, if you don't have these in, you can actually add these to your demographics table uh, using a different uh, nearest toolbox function. I'll cover that uh, at a, on a different video. And a variety of options are, are available with this. So you can look at interactions. Interactions are likely very interesting. Um, this would be denoted by a colon. So it, it noted here group colon um, cond would specify a test for the interaction between group and the condition to see if there's significance between that interaction, uh, as opposed to those two events uh, alone or the main effects of those events alone. If you use an asterisk, it will actually not only do the interaction, but also each item individually. So in that you would have group and condition, the interaction effect, and hidden behind the scenes would also be the main effect of group and the main effect of condition in your formula. Uh, you can also look for random effects or control for random effects, where you would denote this as the random effect with the straight bar and the grouping variable, uh, which you saw previously was a one, 
uh, straight line grouping variable being subject. That was controlling for the, I believe it's the uh, random effect of in individual variability, if, if I believe that, if I, I'm quoting that correctly. Uh, these are just some examples of how you could do this. So beta squiggly negative one plus group colon condition plus the uh, one in parentheses control uh, grouped by subject. This does not include a y-intercept. That's denoted by the negative one here. It tests for the interaction between group and condition using this, and it controls for intersubject variability using this. The next option would be beta squiggly negative one plus condition plus group plus age. This again does not include a y-intercept denoted by the negative one here. It tests for the main effects of condition, group, and age. That's all you're looking for. The last one is probably one of the simplest. You, it does include a y-intercept, showed by the plus one here, or the positive one, and it tests for the main effective condition. That's it. So you can do this a number of ways. Uh, I have personally found a few errors just based on format. So if you're doing interaction effects, the uh, effects have to be um, the same size. So they have to have the same amounts, essentially. Um, there's a few formatting uh, tricks that you'll have to work through if you're doing more complex uh, regression formulas. <clears throat> so once you have this, and if we notice over here, we've run it and we've extracted this mix effects uh, variable. Once we have that, we may want to actually look at it. Well, there's a very cool table function. You would just call your variable, in this case, mix effects dot table, it prints this lovely table out. So you have source and detector combination, whether it's oxy or deoxyhemoglobin, what condition it is. This is cut off, but it's basically two separate conditions. Um, and then what model was used on that, which is essentially your Wilkinson notation model. You get your beta value out of that, the standard error, the T statistic, actually several others that are cut out of this image. I think P values, Q values, a few others. Uh, the mixed effects, uh, variable itself or output itself actually allows for both a t-test and an f-test so now you can actually contrast the uh, specifics in your in your model so uh, what one thing i actually left out here let me pull that up what i didn't do is actually display the conditions i probably would want to do that uh, you can actually use this conditions equals mix effects dot conditions or your variable dot conditions and here you'll see i have two conditions which is stem channel 15 and stem channel one, and I have a group, the, and it's also grouped, so it's gonna be the control group and the pathology group, the control group and the pathology group. So that that's our four conditions, essentially, that I'm going to contrast using this contrast. And if we go back here, you'll notice here I'm looking at the first column, which was going to be uh, stem channel 15 or condition 15 control group. And I'm gonna contrast that against the third column which is going to be stem channel one control group. So I'm essentially looking at the control group. What's the difference between conditions in this case? Of course, I can vary that however I want to. Uh, in the second one, I'm gonna be looking at the control group for stem channel 15 and the pathology group for stem channel 15. So now you're looking at the same condition between groups. Here's how you would actually run the, uh, the t-test. Uh, you basically do mixed effects dot t-test and you put your contrast in, save it as an output variable. For the f-test, you just replace the t with an f, and, and it'll run that as well. To draw that, uh, you can actually plot your results. Very nice. You can actually use uh, a threshold to, to look at the, the effects. And of course, you can also do the table output as well. So here you have mix effects plot. So I do the output dot draw. I specify that it's the t-stat I want to draw. I specify a uh, legend uh, threshold. So basically here you'll see it goes from negative three to three. If those values are too big, then all your values will look white. It's not very useful. If they're too small, you'll have several that max out and that's also not very useful. And then here I have Q or the corrected uh, P value is less than 0.05. And so I have these uh, uh, statistically significant channels. You can also replace Q with P if that's something you wanted to do. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I hope you can actually uh, kind of get an idea of what this Wilkinson notation is. Uh, you can actually run your, your full model through, get an idea of what your output is, uh, and hopefully it's, it's something meaningful. Uh, anyway, I hope that was enjoyable and helpful, and I'll have a few more videos out soon.